Hurst. Um, this is our second Teachers Professional Development Day conduct conducted in partnership with Windsor and Newton. My name is Kate Milner. Uh, I'm the Creative Partnerships Coordinator at Hazelhurst, which in plain English means Education and Public Programs. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Darawal people as custodians of this land. We have today with us um, four of the artists exhibiting in, on this island, meeting and parting, Anne Thompson, Peter Simpson, Ewan McLeod and Steve Lopez. Thank you for joining us. And also Nadia Connor, who's a representative from Windsor and Newton, and uh, she accompanied the artists to New Zealand and looked after their material needs. And we have Darren Gannon and Lisa Riley, who will be conducting workshops with you as well as Natalie today. Also, so okay. to explain the process of um, the exhibition, Firstly, it's a result of a partnership between Artist Profile Magazine and Windsor and & Newton. Um, it involved taking 11 high profile artists on a working tour of the Northern Ireland of New Zealand, which was a foreign landscape for most of the artists. The artists worked plein air and then back in their studios at home to produce the exhibition. Um, so we'll start. Thing is that aspect of it working on plein air and then how you, what you take back to the studio, um, what information you can take back. This is only this limitations in terms of size. I think what's one of the, the main ones. Most people would realise that a lot of those large paintings weren't done on the spot. Um, well, I had tried it and it's bloody difficult. Um, so you know, scale's your first first main problem. I think that's the first one. Um, we were really lucky. And this is what I, I think this is my favourite thing about the trip is they set it up so we could take oil paints. Now, I mean, if any of you have done on, uh, on plein air outside, using oil paints is beautiful, but then when you come to take them home, a real, real problem. Um, uh, really difficult to transport oil paint. Especially um, with 11 others. Especially <laughs> with 11 others, yeah. yeah. So we didn't all use oil paint, but there were the um, potential use them was there, and that was absolutely fantastic. So I think the second limitation with on plain air is materials. Um, I do a lot of work. I do a lot of work on plain air. I, some of the artists do. Some of the artists didn't. Um, they all did on the trip. But um, Peter, you're not. You weren't as. No, I, I mean I've done a little bit. I'm mainly a studio painter. I've done a little bit of plain air work the year before, which helped me a good step. But it was a bit intimidating to start with. Um, but compared to studio work, it really just. It's chaotic, you know, it's chaotic in that everything's moving and shifting the whole time and you're trying to kind of hold on to this thing and put it down on, on canvas and it's all moving all over the place. And so it's that kind of having to work quickly and I'm a fairly slow worker so it forced me to kind of speed up a bit and to put the marks down and really just respond quite quickly to what was going on. Um, and so that was, that was probably one of the most beneficial things for me out of the trip, not down there it's in the studio. Did, did, have you got any of yours? No, unfortunately, of none of the plain air ones yeah, in the show so I because I kind of distilled <coughs> down what I'd done there because we had um, two, two different locations we went to. We went to Carlton Point on the coast and went to Blue Pagu. And the first day out, I just picked a little place way away from Castle Point, away from everybody else in the countryside that sort of reminded me of where I work. And I said to, to, um, uh, to them, so just leave me here and I'll be right for the day. And um, they way. drove off and I thought, oh, well, here I am. <laughs> so I worked there and then cast a point later. And then by the time we got to Rupagi, that opportunity to work with the group was really dynamic and really kind of the whole thing started to kind of gel and make sense. And so it went from there. And then these are a distillation of the rural paper pictures, which I then did back in the studio. The big, the big canvas, the one with the surfer, that is based on a smaller work um, that was done on plein air, and it ends pretty faithful to it. Um, you'll notice that some artists, Lucy has, and David Keeling have got a study and a larger work. Um, and mine, 
it was the attempt was to try and get the freshness into the large work. Um, so basically scaling up, but not only scaling up. Any, anybody will know that on a smaller work, you get the freshness when you're in front of the landscape. As soon as you go to the studio, you can often come, come apart when you try and imitate the br brush marks. The brush mark becomes about making a brush mark rather than looking at the information in front of you. The benefit I find with On Plain Air is that you are looking at information, you're looking at stuff rather than inventing marks. But see, for Anne, that's totally different, isn't it? Because for Anne, her work is about inventing marks, so she's much better at that. But for me, I found that was one of my big problems. And it always is, I've got to say. Because I've been uh, painting for you know, over 50 years, by virtue of my age, <laughs> being a matriarch, um, I have had, uh, yeah, of course I've had experience painting outdoors. Actually, it was that thing that you were talking about, people coming up and looking at you that, that put me right off. And I, you know, I used to, uh, when I learned art in Brisbane from John Mulvick, we used to paint outside. And, uh, and, but more recently, I was in uh, France and my method there was to, uh, and I was living in the country for six months, so I'd take a notebook, draw, and then take those back to my studio. I had a big studio in this uh, farmhouse, and, uh, um, and work from there. So, I, I, in France I worked very closely to the landscape, but, but when I came back from New Zealand, although I'd uh, worked on Mount Ruapehu with acrylic paint, and just uh, um, using the wonderful mountain and rocks that were in front of me and uh, and then I'd say I'd, I'd be painting something about this size on paper and I'd think now what does it mean you know so I'd find it out there um, and then I went back to the studio and I really painted a whole exhibition uh, which I'm having in Melbourne as well as this uh, based on the New Zealand experience so the experience is not always just the look of it it's the feel of it it's the you know uh, remember we drove through and, look, and we've been drawing those rocks, seals on rocks, and we drove through the landscape. You know, that had a big effect on me, that, the weight of the landscape, the rockiness of it, the stone, was, uh, I, I think I call those paintings stone image. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and the sky is heavier, you know, so it's a very different landscape, but it gave me a, a lot of input into my work. And some of the works in there were the works done down here, were uh, the, the small show. ones I did there on, on the spot, yes, yes, mm. yes. So yesterday the curator uh, of the exhibition, Arne Craven, mm. um, described you as working sheltered in amongst the boulders and we've noticed looking at your work that it's very much a close-up view of everything enlarged. Is that...? Yes, but these paintings are not necessarily from that. Right. From, it's not all that, just that memory. Yes. But when I was in, in the rocks I did all those small uh, things yes. and... Uh, and that was terrific, you know, you had your paints there and a rock behind you and, uh, and you know, I think you, you, you people were saying, come on, we're going home, leave me alone, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got into it. Whereas down at, uh, at Castle Point, my little uh, portable easel, which I'd just bought the day before, fell over and everything got in the sand. And <laughs> so I went, went back to a, a little space I'd found and, you know, hid away for a while. And, and where was it, Anne? In the laundry. The laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I only ever saw Anne in the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's been documented.